for a master to solve their problem than a person who will provide them a run-of-the-mill solution. Which I've all, uh, this is in the second point, this is what I was talking about, which is run-of-the-mill solution, a solution that anybody can provide. So you should always try to try to acquire a skill. Okay, you'll learn it, but to master it, you will, you will need to work really hard. And clients will prefer masters over people who can just provide a solution off the internet, just copy paste that or do something similar. Try to keep a close eye on the market trends and be the first one to offer a solution based on those trends. So I was talking about NFT marketplaces. During the NFT boom and the cryptocurrency boom, um, these uh, services you found on Upwork on, and on Fiverr.com, there were many there were many services that were offering NFT marketplaces and cryptocurrency websites. Even they, even, uh, there were many developers who were making cryptocurrencies and tokens. So this was a market trend. People saw it and people earned thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars because they were the first one to offer that. Next slide, please. You need to learn how to be a good salesman, enjoy closing deals. So. You cannot become a freelancer if you're not a good salesman. If you do not like the idea of selling your skills or wanting to sell your skills, don't ever think about freelancing. In fact, I think that learning how to sell is probably the most important skill, the most important, because even if you are a master at, at something, if you do not know how to sell, you will not be able to make a good living. I mean. People will come to you if you do not know how to sell your services for a good price. You may end up taking a project that is worth $5,000 for $1,000 if you do not know how to sell well. You should always know how to sell your skill. And this is the most important, the most important skill, the most important. Even if you are average at what you do, if you're a good salesman, you might be making more than what a master is who is not a good salesman. This is probably the most important skill you need as a freelancer. You must know how to sell your skill services at a high value and establish yourself as a remarkable solution provider. So your client needs to, basically he needs to talk to you. When he talks to you, he should say, this guy is the perfect solution provider. Even if you're not, you have to sell yourself that way. You have to learn that skill. Learn the, way, learn the various tactics that skilled salespeople use to close deals before even thinking about freelancing. I've told this to you. Before you think about freelancing, learn how to sell. You should be able to sell anything. Basically, when you can sell anything, you, are, you know how to sell anything, then is the time you can think about freelancing, not before that. You should be able to demonstrate your skills to a potential client by asking intelligent questions. Now, asking intelligent questions mean that you're talking to a client. The client says, I want this. You say, OK, why do you want this? What is the purpose? What are you trying to achieve? When you ask these questions, essentially, you're telling the client, I am taking interest in solving your problem. That is the thing that the client needs to know. He needs to be convinced. The client needs to be convinced that you are interested in getting the work done and you want to give them the solution. You have to ask those kind of questions that will lead to a, lead to a possible solution. This is actually the best way to close a deal as the client may believe you are the right person for the job if you ask the right questions. Next slide. The, clients, the client needs you more than you need the client. Now that's like that surprises a lot of people. The client needs me, I don't need the client. Well, that is true. It is very difficult to find good people in on online marketplaces. Extremely difficult. The client needs you more than you need the client. Keep that in mind. Why? I'll explain. It is extremely difficult to find good freelancers that provide good quality solutions. Let's come back to the point, run of the mill solutions, WordPress websites, relatively easy to make. But if a client wants a customized solution, you need to know how to make a website from scratch using the latest technologies. That is the problem. There are people that offer run-of-the-mill solutions, which 
person XYZ can provide, but finding good freelancers that are committed to getting work done and also communicate effectively are difficult to find. I, as a client, can tell you I had to literally force the people that I hired to work on the things that they're being paid, for, paid to do. So I found it difficult as a client to get work done because they were not communicating. Sometimes they wouldn't reply for three days. Then they would give, up, give me something that I did not want, I did not ask for. So it is extremely difficult to find good, uh, good freelancers. And this is the thing, the client needs you more than you need the client means that if you prove to the client that you are the best person and you work well, they need you, they will be after you, they'll cling on to you, they'll not let you go because they're difficult to find. And most clients that you will meet in the world will tell you it's difficult to find clients. Uh, it's difficult to find freelancers that can work consistently and e effectively. Most clients that are serious about getting work done prioritize effective communication. Effective communication, key point, effective communication, above everything else, and may hire you for future work based on your communication skills alone. So if you're good at communicating, yet you're making mistakes, the client will forgive you. Most clients will forgive you if your communication skills are good. Because if you're making a mistake, some people try to cover it up. Just be honest and tell them that this was the mistake that I made. There was this, th this was the problem. I apologize, however, I will rectify it. This is, this is a better way of just avoiding or not replying to clients, which many freelancers do. Some clients wish to work with one freelancer for a long time and will prefer freelancers that are skilled and keen to actually get the job done as efficiently as possible. So a client will prefer working with a freelancer who can do a task in one week, not in 10 days, when there is really no, uh, no reason why he's taking 10 days. So generally speaking, if a client comes to you and he or she has worked with a previous freelancer, another freelancer, and uh, they have disappointed, they're saying they're slow. You do the work and that work is done within a week and that freelancer, the other freelancer was taking 15 days. They're going to prefer you because they will believe you're more efficient. However, that does not mean that you should undervalue yourself. So if you're saving the client's time and you're efficient, you should not be punished for being efficient. You can charge more if you're efficient because you will be saving the client's time. So if you can, uh, like people say that uh, people ask what your hourly rate is. At that time, I usually tell them, why do you want to know about my hourly rate? Should I be punished for completing the work quickly? Like if, there, uh, if my hourly rate is $50 per hour and uh, the value of the solution is $1,000, that means I'll, I'm doing it in two hours. I'm earning $100 for something that I believe is worth 1000 So I'm being punished for completing something for two, uh, inside two hours when I have the knowledge and skill to do it. I shouldn't be punished for that. So when you're efficient, you can also tell the client that I'm saving your time, and your time is valuable. You can say that. Clients value freelancers. Oh, sorry, I've already said that. Most, pro most projects fail when freelancers are not serious about completing tasks miss deadlines or simply do not communicate well. So again, serious about completing tasks, miss deadlines or simply do not communicate well. I think the simply do not communicate well thing, that is the most important because if you don't communicate well, doesn't matter how good you are, how good you are at your job, you will most likely fail most of your projects. Next slide. Learn to give the client what they want. What does that mean? If the client wants X, give them 